Hi traders and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial I would like to take a few moments to show you how I swing trade. Now the way that I swing trade may be very different than the way that you like to swing trade and so I don't want you to change what you're doing if what you're doing works. I just simply want to show you how it can be done and also how to use the tools that we have available to us to help in the decision making process. But for swing trading I normally like to sit on the four hour chart. I like these charts very much as I find that these levels are quite profound. And so what I like to have here is clean charts as you can see here. And in the top chart which is the price chart I have two instances of the supply and demand indicator. The first one is showing me the dynamic levels of supply and demand and these are going to be the fatter of the two lines and the next one here this is simply going to be showing me the round numbers or the big figures and this is what we can see here as you can see here we have the 9350 the 9300 9250 9200 and so forth and so on so this is what I need when I'm trading this particular strategy. Regarding the strength information I have three instances and the thicker line of the three this is the 200 period look back. The median thickness line is the 100 and the thin line is the 50 period uh, look back. And so this is what I have and this is all I need. And We need to focus on price as we can see here. So what this does is it brings two things to our attention which are very important. It brings round numbers, so psychological levels in the market, and it brings historically respected levels which are in the form of supply and demand, support and resistance. And so these are the two things that we'd like to focus on here. And what I want to see uh, in order to qualify or rather pre-qualify a trading setup is I want to see these levels overlapping. So here you can see we have we have the 9400 level here and it overlaps nicely with this supply and demand level here. We go to another chart, we'll take the euro for example. This is the uh, 1450 level and it overlaps with this supply level. The indicator isn't drawing it because it's only going back um, just enough. But if I modify the, the settings of the indicator it'll go back here and draw this line. And the beauty of this level actually is that price has not been back to test it since it was established. So this is a very nice fresh level. If we go back to this example here you can see that this line has been established here and price sat on it but since since this break lower price has not been back. So again here we have a nice fresh level. So what I need to see here is I need to wait until price reaches the levels that I'm looking to trade at. And of course there's no prices so we can't really look here but here we can see uh, what's going on nicely. So if we focus on this little bit here, what I'll do is I'll draw a line to the, to the left and a line to the right of this little area of price and then we'll zoom in and see what price is doing on the smaller time frame. So if we find this area there we are you can see that this is exactly what we want to see so here we have price as you saw on the four hour chart and move up to the level and then we can see that then price was rejected and moved lower so the point of going on to the smaller time frames is that here we can have a closer look at the anatomy of price when it reached the level and also we can also see the strength information we can see what's going on here so what do we need to focus on well first of all we want to focus on the way that price moves up into this level and you can see here that we had a relatively efficient price uh, movement from from this uh, base this dealing range here and higher and then when price got just below the level it spiked into the level and then it was rejected. So this spike into the level is very nice. I like this very much. It's not a terribly big level but let's have a look from the point of the bottom here to the top. Okay it's a pretty big move. It's almost 60 pips. 
about 40 to 60 pips depending of where you measure it. So this is a very nice push higher. And so I like this. So when price moved up into this level, then I would simply sit on my hands and wait. Many people would have their, their limit orders to sell here. Um, or wherever it was that we had our level marked off and you can do this but then you don't you're not really in power anymore then you might get stuck in the trade and then it moves against you and it moves against you 25 pips and then you start to feel a little bit uneasy and and uncertain about about the level and the trade and maybe bail on the trade but if you wait and you see what price does and you allow price to come up to the level and blast through it and then reject and then you can look to the strength information and see what's going on here. And you can say, okay, price went up to the level and at the point it did so, we had a nice divergence of currency strength into the level. So the dollar was gaining in strength and the Swiss franc was losing strength uh, quite aggressively, which shows this little, this little bubble here, just here. So this, this explains the spike into the level. But now we want price to move lower. So what then? Well, now we have to look at the strength informations after price has settled down a little bit. So you can see that you can see that price moved up to the level here and immediately after you can see here that the dollar started to sell off very aggressively. And so from about this point here this point here we can see that, that things are starting to look quite quite attractive for us. You can see that the Swiss franc is picking up in strength, which supports a short here on all of the strength readings. Additionally, we have the American dollar is also starting to, to draw in towards the zero line. And in fact, the shorter time frame strength reading is moving down very aggressively. So this is beautiful. So this tells us that this level would likely hold. So what do we do then? Well, then we have to find somewhere to get in. And I find myself taking more and more market orders. As long as you're not uh, trying to fill, fill orders in the middle of a, a liquidity void, then, then you'll normally get a pretty good fill, um, no matter the broker. So if I want to get in here, I'll simply sell um, somewhere within this little price nodule here. So I can see that the strength readings are confirming a move lower on this particular currency pair. And so let's assume that you get in, let's say some random place here. Where would you put your stop? With your stop, you need you need protection. Come on. So you want to put your stop above these levels here. So you want to give yourself about a, maybe a 20 pip stop or so. It's about a 21 pip stop, so that's fine. And for targets, then you have to go to... You have to look at the information that the price is telling you. And you can see here we had a like an area of consolidation here. So we'll just mark that off with this little price chart, with this little rectangle here. You can see price kind of dipped into this price here. And so you want to be looking to take something out when price starts to get in. That's not a very good clear thing there. We'll remove that. You want to be looking at uh, a logical place to take profit or close the trade. And this is going to be these small reference points. So these dips lower, you see how price dipped into this little release point here. Then the next one is just below. And you should also notice that this is the 9303. So this is the big figure level. And so a lot of the big institutional funds, they normally have orders, limit orders that are in and around these levels. So if you're looking to um, get out at the 9300 level and I probably wouldn't wait until price reaches the 9300. I'd be looking at 9305 or 9310 because sometimes the big banks have their orders in at the levels um, plus or minus um, 5 to 10 pips. Um, and also you'll find that, that orders are layered around these levels. They're not just put exactly at this level. There'll be, lo there'll be orders up here There'll be more orders down here. They'll be kind of cascaded throughout this level here, and on the on the bad on the on the opposite side here. So they'll, they'll be laid in the market like this. And so you want to find like a relatively logical place to to get out here. And so it's up to you. But you could probably look at getting into the perhaps the the 9310 level, 
and uh, and then be fine and be okay with that. And if, as soon as price moves past your entry, let's say you get in here, or oh, where was it we got in? We got in. Come on. Jeez. You know we'll do a new one. Let's say we got in here. As soon as price starts moving lower, you want to be reducing risk. So at about 10 pips, it's I would likely have no risk in the trade anymore. So my stop would be at break even when price gets to 10 pips, which is about here. You can see there's a very strong move lower. Again, keep your eye on the strength information. You can see that price is really being rejected and the dollar is selling off and so this is a very strong move lower and again just start scaling out so I'd probably have quite a large portion of my trade off um, when I could see that price was kind of pinning around here maybe this area here I'd like to to have something out here majority of the trade here which is still a decent um, a decent move for sure Then you can leave a small portion on and then you can take the second half of the trade um, down here as we spoke about earlier and so it's nice to have a trade a position size that enables you to dice it up into small slices so that you can you can scale out of the trade when you when you see that this is a, a good thing to do um, but that's ultimately one way to trade on a higher time frame and this is exactly how I'm doing it trading like this enables you to get away from the smaller time frames and the levels that are less significant than the four hour levels and enables you to perhaps put on trays that you can have more confidence with and of course when you trade like this it requires that you you're gonna to have to be a little bit more patient because price has to get there first of all and additionally price can sit on your levels and kind of waffle around for a while until it figures out what it's gonna do and so I, I recommend finding these levels like this go on a demo account or on a micro account and identify these levels and just simply trade all of them um, and after a period of time then you'll realize that you've that you've really kind of found your your niche with respect to this setup and then they'll be a lot more comfortable for you to take in the future because when price is roaring up towards your level of course you don't want to stand in front of the train you want to wait for it to to reach the level and then to show you what it's going to do and after it's shown you what it's going to do then you can with confidence uh, enter the market to sell um, but yeah, as I mentioned, some it might sit on this level for a period of time for maybe four, eight, twelve hours before it figures out if it's going to go lower. So it just requires kind of sitting tight. So get in the trade and then go for a walk, and uh, try not to fiddle with it too much. I remember earlier on I had a tough time leaving trades in. I would always spot the good levels and price would go in. It'd fill my order, and then it would move maybe I don't know ten pips in my favor, and then and then I would close the trade early just to see price move an additional 50, 60, 100 pips or whatever. So it's very important that you let these trades flow and do their thing because price doesn't move up and then down and up and down. It wiggles around, it wiggles between these levels. So it'll wiggle from this one up to the next one. And so price, it's unnatural for price just to move in a straight line up or down. So just give them some time to breathe and uh, and I think you'll you'll do fine over time. But that's it. I will uh, leave you with that. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks very much for watching.